Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video. And in this video, I just wanted to share with you guys some really important information about the fearful avoidant becoming more secure. So um, as many of you know, I was once very fearful avoidant myself and, and, and have been blessed to become really, really secure and be in a really secure relationship for years now. And um, we have a ton of students who come into PDS and become secure, like a ton and tons of people who are in there who I'm so proud of if you guys are listening to this right now, um, who come in and put in the work and are now in there like really helping others and sharing tips and tools and, um, and also continuously healing and growing and learning new things. So, um, you know, this is, happening and I'm basically creating content for those individuals. I know there's some of you guys on this channel who have probably been putting in the work and watching videos and doing stuff. Um, but I just, I really want to stress, like, this is so completely possible. I know a lot of people have doubts. I know that there's certain books out there and I'm not here to say negative things about anybody, but, um, I know there's certain books out there that are like, if you're a fearful avoidant, good luck to you. <laughs> um, it's basically impossible to become secure. And it's just not true. And the reason for this is that our subconscious mind gains programs through repetition plus emotion. And when we have the right tools to target those subconscious programs through new repetition and new emotion, um, we fire and wire new neural pathways and patterns that can work for us, that can be things that are really working on behalf of our subconscious and not things that are working against us um, at a subconscious level because of past trauma, right? So our typical situation when we have a fearful avoidant, and I'm going to go through some key stages here in just a moment of like what happens as you become more secure, but we basically, as a fearful avoidant, grow up acquire imprinting from trauma, different programs and patterns that we adopt and see and, and get imprinted with, that traumatized with, essentially stored subconsciously. Um, and then we are likely to reenact those patterns, or at least the coping mechanisms that we used to deal with those painful patterns we were exposed to, perhaps in a family household or in a specific relationship we had with somebody. And then we bring those patterns into our future relationships. But again, like we're not born with these patterns and we can create change. So um, what I wanna go through in this video here is just some major things you're gonna see on your journey of being a fearful avoidant and becoming secure because a lot of people will ask me about this, like all oh, these things are changing. Does this, is this it? Am I secure now? And I just wanted to um, share the, some stuff on here. So the first thing that I will usually see, and again, these don't, these don't necessarily take place in any particular order, but I do see a lot of these stages. The first stage is the becoming aware of your stuff stage. And this stage is not easy. Um, it's basically the hardest stage of healing in my opinion. And these are not you know, concrete stages with like specific names. I'm just saying the patterns that I observe and, and you know, I don't have a beautiful name for it. But in the first stage, what I find is that we kind of stop numbing. And this can be a really challenging stage because we finally look at our stuff. We look at our patterns. We, we start finding out about our core wounds. We start paying attention to how perhaps our family dynamics or family systems or past relationships have affected us. And we acknowledge ourselves and we stop being in some sort of slight state of dissociating from ourselves and our emotions. And we get kind of back in our body. We feel, we notice, we observe. And we also learn that we have a relationship with ourselves. And it can be a a lot to feel and it can be a lot to notice and a lot to take on and to bring up, but it's also extremely powerful and it's also a beautiful act of self-love. And the reason for this is that it's through times like this that we are actually present with ourselves. We're actually paying attention to ourselves. We're actually acknowledging our life experiences and our history and our past. And it's really powerful to be able to do so. Just like if we had a child, they would wanna be seen and they want their pain to be acknowledged and they want their feelings to be noticed. And really this isn't different in, in the relationship to ourselves. So this is sort of stage one. And stage two is that we start getting the reprogramming tools down. We start realizing, hey, these things are solvable. And now through knowledge and awareness and information, I start recognizing, hey, these things are also changeable. And there's sort of a hopefulness there. And I really want to share that in this stage, you're not supposed to feel like you have all the answers right away. In this stage, 
it's going to feel like you're starting to kind of see the puzzle pieces and it feels like there's a lot of puzzle pieces at first to put together and a lot of a lot of new language and terms and what we are learning is emotional literacy in this stage we're learning that hey guess what there's a whole bunch of stuff here there's ways of communicating what our feelings are and what our needs are and we have needs and we have boundaries and all these things and you know we'll we'll gather all this information at first and it really is like learning a new language it's like all this new stuff and at first it can feel a little bit overwhelming but over time if you don't give up in this stage you start putting more and more puzzle pieces together and the picture starts coming together and it gets clearer and easier and simpler over time and this and the practice of this through repetition doesn't just move you know as we practice tools for reprogramming as well it doesn't just move the needle um, out of this stage of, of awareness, it, it moves us into the stage of reprogramming and active healing at the subconscious level of mind. And this is where we start seeing these really cool things. And this is stage three that starts to really take place. We start putting the pieces together in stage two and kind of learning and gaining knowledge. And then stage three, we start seeing the transformation. So stage three, we're called the transformation stage. And by the way, if you are not doing this work already too, and you want to do a deep dive, you can check this stuff out for free for seven days um, by clicking the link in the description box below. You can start with the Fearful Avoidant Reprogramming course, and you can just test run it and see if it's helpful for you and see if it makes sense. Because I really like this stuff heals, it works. We see it all the time. And I just, you know, you don't have to feel like I once felt um, forever. You know, this stuff is really changeable anyways. So I'll stay on track. So stage three, we'll call the transformation stage. And in this stage, we start seeing some big shifts taking place. And usually I find that we get like less triggered, less often. Suddenly when we get triggered, and this is a really big one, you'll feel space between your emotional reactivity and your behavior. So like usually fearful avoidance, they get like taken over and I've been here. So I like no judgment, you know, we get taken over at the time with our emotions and they're so strong and it's just like your emotions are running you instead of the other way around. But suddenly as we start to develop awareness and emotional literacy and we become conscious of our subconscious patterns, there's this part of us that's often able to sort of observe ourselves in real time and catch it and be like, here's this thing, all of this anger, all of this frustration. And, and, you know, and, and when we've learned different ways of communicating um, or different ways of questioning our stories, instead of just assuming these old patterns that we have over and over again, we, we actually get this ability to regulate ourselves in real time. And it won't be perfect at first. It'll be like, you did it. Oh my God. I can't believe I just did that. I can't believe I feel better. Oh my gosh, this is working. And then you'll do it again and again, and then you'll totally mess up on the fourth time or the eighth time or the 15th time. And that's normal because healing is not linear. There's like two steps forward, one step back, two more steps forward, one step back, four steps forward, one step back. You know, we, we have this sort of like progression that, that isn't so simple. And then you get into a place where you're also able to start noticing your needs, knowing your needs, know yourself, um, start showing up for your needs and your boundaries. And all of these things dramatically improve our, all, our internal sense of self-esteem. And as we actually feel like, wow, I, I'm showing to myself through repetition and emotion, I'm doing the reprogramming work to see that like I'm worthy of having needs and talking about them and setting boundaries, we feel better. We feel like better in our own skin. Um, and as we learn self-compassion and and we learn to like actually know how to take ourselves into consideration in real time. The coolest thing I think for fearful avoidance, or at least one of the coolest things for me as a previous fearful avoidance is like how much just safer and better and normal I feel on a daily basis because I'm not in some sort of position where I'm like carrying resentment that I didn't truly tell somebody how I felt or what I wanted. And then, you know, I, I'm not in this place where I'm repressing my needs to favor others and, and then feel unseen later or unheard or like, I don't matter, or, you know, like I'm taken advantage of, you know, because I just feel safe talking. And if something's not okay with me or not that cool for me, if I have a need that's unseen, I have no problem just letting somebody I love know and just doing it in a respectful way and considering both of our needs and just facilitating a conversation. And these things start happening in real time through like reprogramming of core wounds, through showing up and knowing what our needs are and recognizing our patterns and practicing just a little bit over time each day so that we start having the ability to do this stuff. And we clean out resentment from our relationships and we feel safer in the world because we actually have boundaries and we don't feel like everybody can just do with us what they want. Um, and we, we actually feel like we're seen and heard and connected and that vulnerability is okay because if something is there that I don't like, 
and doesn't feel safe, then I just set a boundary and that's okay too. Um, and we really get to dump out all of those reactive pain points that we've been carrying for so long at a subconscious level around feeling, you know, just unworthy or bad so easily and guilting and shaming ourselves so easily or feeling um, like we're in some sort of position where, um, you know, we, we, again, like are unseen or we're trapped or helpless. It's like, hold on. I may feel like that right now, but there's something I can do. I can use my voice. I can use my words, or I can set a boundary or can choose to do something that doesn't feel right. I can choose to move away from something that doesn't feel right for me, but in a way that's respecting and honoring and kind and assertive. So we just feel like we're able to get into a position where a lot of these things shift and become a lot easier. And so we're really going to see these things in that transformation stage be like, slow but steady with a lot of mishaps in between. It's not going to be like, I questioned my stories in real time where I did reprogramming on a core wound and in week one, it's gone. It's going to be like, no, you need that three weeks. You need that 21 days to create new habits at the subconscious level before we actually feel like we're really dumping out these core wounds, these ideas or beliefs that I'm trapped or I'm powerless or I'm not good enough or I'm unloved or I'm unworthy. These things start to shift um, through practice. And, you know, you, you may still have times where you're like, I didn't set a boundary, but then you come back and then you do it and you show up and you have self-compassion and these things really begin to shift. So that's sort of our transformation stage. And then we see stage four, which is what I would call like our solidification stage. And it's like all this work that you put in and the way you showed up for yourself and the heavy lifting you have to do sometimes, it starts to work on your behalf. So in real time, because we've actually reprogrammed these things, rather than having to do the work in real time, the stuff is just there working for you. These are your programs. You just know how to communicate a boundary in real time. You just realize, oh, I feel bad right now. And it's because this need is unmet. So I just have to share it with this person quickly. And it's easy. Um, and you feel naturally worthy of speaking up. And you feel like speaking up doesn't have to be an argument or a fight or driven by anger. It can be just driven by like truth and I'm just going to talk and it's no big deal. And it's not charged emotionally and the core wounds go away and we're not feeling them so often. We're not having them show up for us. And we have to work them out after the fact and repair through the situation. We just have the absence of them. And you'll find big time in the stage, you get triggered less and less. Like if you used to get triggered every day, you know, you now get triggered once a week and then once a month and then once every three months. And, and if we do get triggered, it's less and less, right. Instead of it being like a nine or a 10, it's like a, a two or a three or, you know, and, and it just, everything starts spacing out that way. So then we get a lot of time to focus on things we want to create and share and do, and we can live from our heart more because we can, you know, be more regulated and put our thought and emotional energy, not into like continuously fighting against stuff that we're feeling inside of us. And it's getting brought up for us in our relationship context, but like in so many places um, in our life, we can pour our energy into, um, you know, what we want to create or share or relationships we want to build or a business or ideas or whatever it is um, that you feel the need to, to share in the space that you want to come from. So anyways, these are some things, um, that I wanted to share with you and, um, just, I have a lot of questions about this stuff. So I wanted to just put a video together about it and I hope this makes sense. Um, and hopefully you can sort of see where you're at in your stages. And, um, again, if you want to just do work on this stuff and you can check out the school for free, it's like risk-free. If you forget to cancel in the first seven days, then you can literally get a refund so easily from customer service, like super, super, um, we work with everybody so much with everything. So check it out like have the opportunity. You know, I, I went through this myself. I grew, I healed. Um, and I'm not saying I'm like perfect or anything like that. Like I still have moments as a human, um, just like anybody else, but just like from where I was and what I felt on a daily basis to now is literally like the biggest world of difference. And I feel so grateful and so blessed. Um, and you know, so I just want to share that with you guys. So anyways, um, check everything out if you would like to, and thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Please like share and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.